Well, thank you very much for having invited Monitas here. Uh, we basically want to leverage crypto finance, and we could also talk in the other room over there because we have a lot of similarities with the blockchain technologies, although we are not quite the same. We want to power the next level of financial inclusion. Now, why the next level? I mean, it has uh, done phenomenal success so far. We know about 270 uh, different mobile services are already there, 400, over 400 million subscribers, uh, and a lot of that grew in the last uh, two years. So we have done a lot of uh, good for the financial inclusion. But as you see, there is a but. Even in the most uh, phenomenal country where the biggest success with M-Pesa is, 98% of all transactions are still done by cash. Now, from the 2.5 billion unbanked, so far we have only reached 130 million active customers. And active customers is quite a generous uh, description because they use it once within a quarter. The reason why we think uh, it is not yet uh, fully there is because the merchants, which are at the focal point of all transactions, they are merely excluded. Or would you pay 10 to 20 percent of transactions fees for a cashless transaction? Uh, and that is the reality uh, which even in, in uh, countries like Kenya, uh, the merchants are faced with. So basically they are excluded. People need to go, consumers need to go back to cash which means an, uh, an expensive cash agent network needs to be maintained, and that eats up more than 50% of all revenues of those mobile payment providers. Now, what we have set out to, to solve are basically the three biggest problems for, or three biggest barriers for, uh, um, to the growth of mobile payments. The one is we want to make transactions the most cost-effective where they are largest. In Kenya, again, to, to quote that example, 50% of all transactions are below $1, and 80% are even below $5. So that is the, that is the reality. And we have a um, payment system that basically our maximum fee is where their minimum fee is starting. We can tr transact values as low as one cent for the cost of a one hundredth of a cent. So that's basically nothing. So there's no uh, uh, economical barrier anymore to do, uh, to accept cashless transactions. The second part is they are fully interoperable between networks and between markets, countries, different uh, currencies. One of the big uh, disadvantages of current mobile payments are that, uh, or is, that they are not interoperable. Technically speaking, every mobile operator which offers mobile money offers a, an additional uh, national currency, even if it is packed to the national currency, but uh, if you do, are not on the same network, you cannot, you cannot accept that money. And finally, as our technology is not a pure payment platform, it is a, it is a contracting platform. You can add whatever, kind, whatever you can put into a contract, you can trade on this platform, be that a savings contract or be that a uh, credit contract or even insurance policy or whatever else you want to think of. Now, how is that world? What we are saying, we are probably the world's first real digital wallet. Whatever we see normally in, uh, when you have a mobile uh, wallet or account, this is a mere customer front end, which basically leads back to a centrally managed account somewhere in the back end of the banks or mobile operators in the case of uh, mobile money. In our system, the money is literally the same as we have with the leather wallet. So I have here my, my bank note, which is basically printed paper by the, uh, by the national bank. And in the, our system, you have instead of printed paper, you have, a co you have coded, let's say, a token, uh, which is easily dividable for, uh, in however many times, and that sits in your wallet. And that is basically what our system is. There is obviously a backup for security reason, but that is what it happens. So there is no central wallet. This tokens, they are cryptographically insured. So that is basically, we replace organizational trust, which you have with the banks or the mobile provider, and financial intermediary, we replace that by algorithmic security. Now, how does it work? We have two partners which uh, want to deal with each other. I want to send you money. I write the contract, or my, my client does. You get that contract, you sign it, and then neutral notary, oh, up here for you, neutral notary is basically just witnessing. The money never leaves 
my wallet or the contract goes directly to my partner or the one I do the business with. The notary is a pure witness and therefore it is basically uh, not a financial intermediary. No one else than the sender of the money can uh, initiate or alter any kind of transaction. We have a very simple and an extremely scalable uh, business model. We have there the market partner, which basically does the customer interface, uh, gets 0.5, so more than half of the, of the transaction fee. The notary operator gets 0.1, and we get 0.3% uh, percent of that transaction. The whole transaction is, is uh, kept at 30 cents. Uh, so even if you have a billion uh, of transactions, that 30 cents is the maximum you have to uh, pay. Now, where are we in the, in the process? We have the product, the platform ready. We have, currently, we have done a proof of concept a pilot in, uh, in uh, Tunisia with the National Post to, to become the national uh, payment platform there. Uh, successfully concluded. We are now working on integration. We expect this quarter to have real customers with real money on the system. And uh, roughly by the end of the year, hopefully as from October, we will have then the national rollout. The, we have further three MOUs uh, signed up, covering 12 countries with more than 300 million people there. We have a team of 25 people working on that one. The uh, leadership team, which uh, you see here, has more than 100 years' experience uh, total in management of all relevant uh, parts of uh, which we cover it, because we want to look at the whole ecosystem. And finally, we have investment gathered so far with 7 million. Uh, we expect to break even 2019 and uh, quickly uh, cross the level of 100 million profits. We are now raising uh, 15 million in our fourth round, so uh, I cordially invite you to join us in empowering the world of <laughs> prosperity. Thanks. Shall I hand over to the panel? Any questions? Thanks, Vitas. Um, so, uh, could uh, could you just expand on your ideal distribution model? Um, that didn't come across as clear to me, certainly. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you see as your most successful, most efficient way of entering a market? Yeah, if we can partner with a, uh, an organisation which has already a lot of customers. So it's the National Post in Tunisia. It's uh, in two markets where, where we are currently working. It's uh, the mobile uh, payment platform. And in one market, that's quite an interesting one, uh, we have the National Bank uh, there. We have two banks, one mobile network operator and the post. So that is the ideal scenario in, in my way because the National Bank shall issue the, uh, the digital assets. And the market partners, as I had on the models, there can be several, they have the customer interface. And, uh, and they basically uh, relate to the customers. They have all the customer data, so we do not interfere with them at all. And the more partners there are, there is a competition. Yes, that's true. But they, they also help each other because it's all about the ecosystem which is going to be developed. Okay, thank you. Do you see this model um, expanding the use of digital and cryptocurrency and all these other uh, things that are emerging quite rapidly. Um, do, you, do you see any encroachment into um, more mainstream models like, like the actual banks? And is there any kind of encroach, uh, encroachment into your model yeah. uh, either way? The time was off, so I couldn't uh, make that pitch anymore. And we have to focus currently. So what we are, what we are looking at currently is where is the benefit biggest, where we can, uh, where, uh, we can deliver uh, our system too. But you can imagine, if you don't need central account manager anymore, how many uh, processes you can simplify in current banking business. And yes, uh, we have been on, on CBIT uh, a month ago, and all big German banks have been with five to 15 people at our booth to get to know the, uh, uh, the technology. We talk with all major banks in Switzerland, and, uh, and uh, we are invited to speak with the National Bank, Switzerland, and other uh, main uh, big commercial banks. For us as a startup, we have chosen to go the financial inclusion route because we believe that they are, as the need is higher, they can move faster. Because if you have the commercial banks, there's, a, there's 
all the legacy systems which are there, so until we can, we can relate with them properly, but maybe we can talk uh, later, <laughs> how that's possible, it, it will take probably more time. So there we are in the, in, the, in the incubator innovation teams talking to that one. We are not yet at the business. Whereas in the markets I was uh, talking about, we are basically discussing on the sea level. Um, where is your development taking place? Is that all um, within Switzerland or? It's headed in Switzerland, but yeah. uh, it's only about one third or one quarter of the developers. Right. All the rest is spread around uh, Europe, the US, even Brazil we have, in Egypt. It's very decentralized. Right. Okay. But they come together every, every yeah. two months, have their sprints and... Good. Yeah. Thank you.